players, welcome back to the Long Play Listening Party, the show where we go deep on local music, writing, recording, inspiration, gear, and whatever else sounds good to us. I'm Howie Howard from Mr. Furious Records, joined by my co-host, Nate Holt, Astrology's Music. What's going on, Nate? What's up? Welcoming back to the show, Stick Figure. What's going on, Stick? Hey, what's going on, y'all? Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. We are listening to Stick's new project with Conductor Williams, Valley of Dry Bones. It's so good, we may end up listening to it twice. Who knows what's going to happen? But you may know him from uh, years and years of wonderful music. You may know him from the Good Game podcast on Spotify. Uh, You may know him from Twitter, where he's very active. But uh, we're glad to have you back. Hey, thank you very much, man. Seriously, I really appreciate it. Thank you for tuning into the music and uh, all the other endeavors that I'm that I'm fiddling around with I, <laughs> right now. I can't believe it. Yeah, I mean, man. it's been I, I had to look it up, but it's been basically a year since we did East of McVicker Ave. If you haven't listened yeah. to that episode, go back and check it out. Incredible three parter on that uh, album, which is one of my top albums of the year last year. But it's. It's been a while, and it's uh, it's good to see you. Thanks, man. No, seriously. Yeah, I really that was a, that was a fun show too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to do the end of the year too. Like we did the New Year. Yeah, show yeah. yeah. That was, uh, we'll be we'll be doing that again. Information coming soon on that, but we'll be doing that again. Um, dope, dope. And I'm realizing now, it might have been that show with you. They kind of made us realize, oh, we just need to plan for multi-part episodes because because these are um, really fun to go deep on, you know? Yeah, for sure. Good. It's a good time. So, um, I mean, we've kind of covered all the history and stuff in that show. So, so take us straight to like Valley of Dry Bones. What's the conversation like with your collaborator, Conductor Williams? Are you are you guys just always kind of have something simmering in the background or or does a specific project come together with a specific intent or what's the, how does that come together? I mean, lately, lately it's been, um, I mean, yeah, it's always been a conversation. We talk, we talk fairly often. So, um, that's just kind of like the nature of our relationship beyond music is that we're like always having a conversation about, you know, other records or just things going on in our lives uh, things we're experiencing, things we're thinking about, things we're aspiring to. So, yeah, with me and him, uh, this record kind of came about while he was working on, I want to say he was working on a Griselda project with West Side Gun. The, uh, oh, I can't, I think it's called uh, HH, H, H, HW8 and 9, I think. It was like a double project. Right. It was in the midst of doing that project, and he was sending out beat packs for it. And I was just kind of... I, I was in the middle of, honestly, not doing a lot of writing at the time. Uh, just kind of like doing outside work stuff, just day-to-day, nine-to-five stuff. But he was sending me joints, and, and they were just kind of like standing out. I was like, ooh, this one, and this one, and this one. And uh, I always kind of have a penchant for the ones that are stranger. Mm-hmm. Like, the stranger, the better, you know, for me to like, find a pocket for. That's the kind of stuff that intrigues me or gets me inspired. So, uh, yeah, we ended up with, like, five five records um, during that period of time that, that ended up being this project. And then, like, the... The idea behind it kind of came together with uh, when you listen to it, like even the song titles is uh, kind of centered on uh, my time in Memphis. Um, Kirby Parkway is a is an is a arteral street um, on the east side of Memphis, and then um, uh, the Four Dolph song uh, is about. The rapper Young Dolph, well, not about Young Dolph, but I reference him in the song mm-hmm. um, because I, again, I was I was kind of back and forth to Memphis as well during that time, and it kind of followed that kind of flow and energy uh, on that project. So it was just kind of it's kind of all came together that way, just for 
where my head was at and what my inspirations were at that time. Okay. That's awesome that you guys have the have the I don't know if luxury is the right word, but that you have a, there's enough creative stuff going on in your environments that you can you're not just grinding away at the next release, but you have time to kind of absorb stuff, choose your beats mm-hmm. and and let those yeah. themes kind of emerge and you do that kind of thematic thing really well. Yeah, well, yeah, there was definitely like a darkness too to some of the joints that he was sending. Like there was kind of a it was kind of like a dark alleyway kind of you know, at least for me, that's like that's what I was when I was listening to it, that's what I was feeling, like just kind of like summer eve, summer nights like maybe like 2 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Down yeah. south, mosquitoes, cicadas. Like that's kind of what the energy kind of was when I was when it was getting put together. So yeah, it just kind of it just kind of come came together that way. I didn't want to do I didn't want to do too much, and then I don't want to do too little. It's kind of a thing for me. Like I hate bloated records, but I don't want it to be so short that you don't get anything out of the experience. Those are all things that I'm thinking about. And that he's thinking about as well, like when when we start making it coalesce in a way that that gels and that'll be good for the listener to hear. So there is there is a real consistent like the five tracks have a real consistent vibe, and that's also consistent with you shot a cool video for the four Dolph song. I mm-hmm. think you came back to Topeka for that, if I remember, because because the sign on the yeah. uh, train station mm-hmm. but that also kind of. I mean, you talked yeah. about summer nights, and that that's that looks like a summer night. It probably was a summer night. It was. It was indeed a summer night. It was. Uh, yeah, that was like really important. Like I, I ended up back, ended up back in Topeka kind of randomly because I had like a opportunity to like I had a day off for some reason, and um, or I took a day off and didn't need to use it for the original purpose that I took it off for or something like that. I kind of snuck into town and and uh, called the videographer uh, Cozy uh, to him, uh, really really talented videographer uh, in Topeka, Kansas, who I've worked with in the past. But um, and I just wanted to like, kind of just wanted to reinforce some of the the vibe of the record um, and return home, kind of to to remind myself in a lot of ways and then remind people through the video like you know i'm I still i'm still tapped into that uh into my home base even though i've been out here in texas for however long um that's still that's still a important part of my my story and my my upbringing so just trying to bring it all together just always trying to tell the story of myself in different ways even visually uh so yeah it turned out pretty dope. Hey, I feel like I've monopolized things. What, what's on your mind, Nate? <laughs> Nate disappeared. Oh, there he is. Nate. Nate. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to have you do is uh, go to your start menu and hit uh, restart. And... Uh, once you do that, it's gonna shut down your computer. To let it let it come back up again, and uh, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had to restart my computer. But we don't have to. You don't have to. Okay. Cool. No. Cool. Cool. <laughs> no. No. Just me. All right. Uh, and everything sounds much better. Okay. And and I and. I, I'm not going to say it was this show a year ago, but it seemed like maybe about this time around last year, I had the same issue, mm. which was basically uh, firmware. Mm. All right. Sorry about that, fellas. No problem. I'll, I'll go through it. May, I mean, I'll edit that, of course. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a piece. I can keep or not or whatever. It doesn't matter. But let's um, 
Let's just start the music. Let's just come back in with some music. Yeah, we had some technical yeah. problems. They're solved now. Let's get the music playing and um. Don't wait for her, man. You know, I want people to have a chance to hear it for sure. And must have bumped your head. They got with it long. Stick, I don't know. Just jump in whenever you want to comment or tell a story or whatever you got. Okay, cool. Cool. Real ass, 24 karat gold, cold all season. Tried to ride the wave, made them seasick, no secret. Live for my babies, nephews, nieces. Starting from scratch, take what's mine, cuz it's harder to ask. Forgive me, part of my past. It's all a part of the craft. These souls go with the bargain. Can even barter with cash, the heart's heavily guarded. And all the scars are attached. Off beat, beat Nick. Decent, real ass, 24 karat gold, cold all season. Tried to ride the wave, made them seasick, no secret. Live for my babies, nephews, nieces. Stop telling a lie when the truth for do. Quit blanking and save, got a life to lose. Got highs a bit, who done tied the news? Got highs a bit, who gon' cut me loose? Share my laughs with too many. Share the tears with too few. Lost the peers of my youth. Vision clear in my view. <laughs> off beat, beat Nick. Real ass, 24 karat gold, cold all season. Tried to ride the wave, made them seasick, no secret. Live for my babies, nephews, nieces. Listen to me, don't know what you find when you digging this deep, but nigga fatigued. Sure as these rhymes have been written in ink, I'm sipping a drink. I finished the pint till it's empty as me, down 385. Hickory Hood, yeah, I be in the east side. Must have bumped your head, think I'm with it long, long, boy, I want Conductor, my bread. A, a lot of like, these. Conductor, we have a problem. Conductor, we have a problem. Conductor. I was really, yeah, like throughout this whole project, like songwriting wise, it was like this kind of fun challenge to do, try to find like catchy phrasing within that short amount of time throughout the track, so. But it get debated, sophisticated with the nigga language, crime and passion, so I get incriminated. Let's get creative when it's limitations, navigating different situations. Body temple doing Man, that, uh, yeah, what he was doing with, with the pitch on that road sample in the last track was, oh, yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah. It's, I mean, listening to it just now and, and going off what you're saying about finding something, there's so much power and just a loop, a little backbeat, live for my babies, nephews, nieces. Mm -hmm. Base, you know, trying to, trying to create. Yeah, it's just like a lot of, a lot of it is just, uh, these two, these first two records are just kind of like, yeah, exercising, like phrasing things that I've been told, and kind of creating these like little, these little fortune cookie, I call them fortune cooking rap, like, you know what I'm saying, just like, succinct phrases. I like that, I like that. That, that, that kind of just like cut directly to it, because I could be kind of a, I mean, y'all know this and listen to my stuff, but like, I could be a pretty like, uh, dense yes. writer. And sometimes I'm like, man, I just want to get right to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, get straight to it. You know, so. Yeah, I kind of like, I, I kind of like that, that, uh, uh, fortune cookie bars type of idea. Yeah. That, that might be a, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, visual thing for a video or something man just you know opening yeah. fortune cookies and like reading <laughs> and i want to look also off one, you know what i'm saying and i also want to we get all i keep seeing like people have everyone seems to have an opinion about his uh tag it's like it's no he does not care <laughs> absolutely i was actually so i was gonna maybe ask you about that because <laughs> well, no, the things about this project is just like, we the best music. Yeah. People have talked about that, and this project just makes it clear like, no, I'm gonna jam it down your throat. <laughs> yeah. just, I'm gonna double down. You don't like it? I'm gonna play it twice as much, you know? You got it. You got it. We figured it out. Yeah, it's like, if you have an emotion about it, then, then that's what it's about. Like, whatever feeling you have about it one way or the other, at least you felt something. It's always been kind of uh, bro's, like, mantra for music, period. So. Hey, man, if it worked for DJ Khaled. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, now this one, I like this. I really like the way that there's this. There's like a sad pitch to the keys, you know? Yep. And there's like that warble on the, the vocal sample. So it's kind of got like a haunting energy around it. I really like this. I really like this beat a lot. Take my shot, mama. Make my mark. Yeah, man, it makes me wonder what he's using to do that, to get, you know, those effects. I, you know, if he's doing it, you know, with his hardware or if he's, you know, it's produced, you know, in the box. I, I don't know what his production process is like. Do you know much about it? I, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't really get into that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know outside of, you know, just knowing that he, he finds records. And then whatever his whatever what do they say like you know, it kicks everybody out of the kitchen so to speak you know what I mean like well, man I saw I saw I saw a clip of him I don't think it, it, I want to say it was in Cali but uh, you know it was him uh, spinning you know the record was mm -hmm. and I I know the song I can't remember what it is but it's like a singer songwriter song that's like you know acoustic guitar like kind of a you know it, it wasn't a hip hop song and uh he's like, yeah everybody, everybody was asking you know everybody was kind of like looking at me like why are you playing the singer songwriter stuff until they found the sample cuz mm. like, like at one point he found the sample repeated it like pitched it down and then you could it was like whoa that's so so man yeah i I'd, I'd love to see kind of be on a, a fly on the wall when he's producing a track just to see how how he's doing it yeah for sure i like this one a lot too i think this is the one that i've released so far it's only been out a few days but i'm like the immediate feedback has been the most like relatable and the one i hear the most about it just kind of i like far side a lot like rappers like that like far side alcoholics like that's kind of an era that's kind of like by gone a little bit is like making songs about like very like ordinary things right or ordinary like every man kind of things which is kind of what my uh like how i started uh so this was a fun one to do just like you know nothing too deep or existential because i do a lot of that kind of stuff as well yeah but even though this kind of has a hint to that, it's kind of a, a more, again, direct, a, a direct way of just like, you know, getting older, having priorities, simple things like being irresponsible, spending your life bill on the, on the ace. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like just that, that thing and then kind of thinking about people who may still be making those sort of choices, even in old age or middle age, you know? Like man, but it's kind of like man, just be a kid again. Yeah, make a bad choice to remember that you that you're alive. Buy the rims instead. Even, <laughs> even though the rent is due, like sometimes you just gotta do it. Sometimes you just gotta do it. Mama jokes. What song? Is, oh, that makes me think of the George Carlin thing about you know take a fucking risk. And that's yeah. somebody sampled that, and I can't think what song it's in right now. Uh. Uh, I've been listening to it though. It's come up a couple times for me lately, and just like in my shuffle, whatever, whatever song has that sample in it. Even just the uh, the idea that as you get older, that you know things like music or hobbies or things that bring you joy, you gotta. You know, stuff it all in the closet somewhere. Conductor, we have a problem. Got a bucking that, bucking that idea. Look, all right, let me tell it plain. The strategies to pedal. This one's just like completely weird. With like no actual songs, but like, like I said, I'm gonna always go with the weirdest beat. Yeah. What's it? I was gonna ask this about the third song, but this one will kind of work too. Like, so for a long time, 
criminals share secrets. Even you know, he said the name of the movie. Snake oil, snake oil. That's what they. Yeah, you're talking about the movie. That was it. He said it. That's the valley of dry bones. He didn't ask that's the best record I've ever heard. Are <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna ask though, Howie? Yeah, no, it's good. I was just gonna ask. I mean, drums were so important in hip hop for so uh, and are still, you know. I mean, but like in the last five years, ten years, there's more of these beats like this. With it's more just a loop, and there's there's not really a strong. No shade, but yeah. drum like like a snare beat or something and just like what's it like to write to that and to rap to that and is it any different or does it feel different or it definitely feels different i mean it's one of those things where like i hesitate i hesitate to use the word trend because that just feels like i'm being dismissive of something happening in music i don't want to do that so I'm kind of like I'm of the mind that like alright so this is where this is where the genre is going the genre is doing right now and I kind of like pride myself on being able to that's like an old thing to like I can rap on anything like I kind of pride myself on that like I kind of hang my hat on that um, but I just kind of I just kind of focus on like having an internal rhythm when I'm listening to something like that because there's it's usually like a downbeat feeling, even if there's no like actual sub bass or drum Definitely. or whatever. There's Definitely like a there's like a emotional or like just kind of like I said, internal. I have like an internal way to rhyme that follows a rhythm. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I can like find that in the production, then I just I just go with what I know. I was going to say, you, uh, you can kind of be more of the uh, what moves it forward um, by just how you, you know, just how, how you're, you're yeah. rapping. Because, like, even on um, the Ford Dolph record, like, it doesn't necessarily have any drums. So I kind of just, like, decided when I started rhyming to it, like I had these different, like just my process is always like, I start with a freestyle and no pen, no paper, nothing. It's me and the music. And then I just kind of like make noises or just say phrases in ways, just different ways to make it make sense. And um, he even told me, he was like, man, you found like a way different pocket than I think a lot of people would have. I was just kind of like, in this, like I said, Memphis Three Six Mafia mood when I got this choice. So, it was like, all the other generation, and it just like kind of like I was like following like the guitar lick on it, and it just sounded cooler. It just sounded like cooler and more fun to do it that way, to, to rhyme against that. And it's like it kind of created its own beat and melody yeah yeah everything just with that flow so it's almost yeah. like and nate i want you to comment on this too but it's like it's almost like it's i see it as like a layer of development mm -hmm. and because you have to you have to have that internal pulse like you say to make it make sense mm -hmm. right and so yeah and as a listener too like if you if you don't have a some kind of grounding it's gonna be a very different experience to hear it versus if you if you do and know kind of where to where to feel that pulse. And Nate, like, I'm almost drawing a connection to like bebop in jazz history or something, where you start playing around the beat, right? And you you stop mm -hmm. you stop having to emphasize the beat explicitly because everyone has developed to a point where you know how to feel it. Now it can be almost negative space, and you can dance around it. Right. Uh... So, so I, I've been taking uh, piano lessons uh, for the last couple, couple months. I mean, like every couple of weeks. And uh, one thing that, um, you know, my instructor said was like, you know, the way I, I kind of keep in time is, 
know, a lot of people go on the the you know the two and the four or whatever. He's like, I'm always one, three, one, mm. three. He's like, and and and, yeah. and 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 he played some like really you know stuff that was like you would listen to it and be like, what what's going on? But he's like, right, doing that. It's like okay, all right, that's that makes sense. And and so I, yeah, I think that's important to to. Um, hopefully, you know, be able to give someone, give the listener a guide, or, or, or you know, a, of how to sort of feel what you're trying to uh, convey, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just kind of go on with your instinct, you know, like yeah, that's a that's a that's a big that's a thing I got from the school of of conductor Williams too, because he just definitely like. It's a big don't overthink it kind of person. So anything I get that I'm feeling, I just I just go with it so that it makes sense in the in the space of me making the record, you know. So but yeah, man. Uh yeah. so let me ask you can I, let me ask you one uh, uh one more thing, like just well, I just have to be one more thing, but uh, I was just just thinking about. So, uh, when you do write, do you when when you go to record? I mean, do you have basically have it down, or, or are you kind of uh, were you working it, and then you know? No, I usually have. Yeah, I usually have like I'm again old fashioned in that I actually write my rhymes. Yeah. Oh. So, like the step is usually, like I said, the freestyle, and then like figuring out what words go there, or what I guess is really the syllables and the con, like just the the structure of the words, like how I want to say it. Then I go to the paper, I go to pen and pad, and then I write. And then that's like the next step of me remembering it, yeah. because just for me. I'm not I'm not Jay Z or any of these other guys I always hear who are like I can't I don't write my rhymes. It's like nah, cause my memory is too bad. So I gotta write it down. <laughs> like, well, memory is not great. Like, I, it's all repetition for me, you know. Right. So like, once I learn the, the pattern or the way that I'm gonna say it without the words, then I gotta take pen to paper and like start forming actual theme or idea of what what I'm writing about. Then that well, begins, that, and then there's first draft, and usually two. I usually do two, unless it's just yeah. I usually do two because if it's if it's whack after two, it's just whack, mm-hmm. and I throw it out. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's I mean, all. Yeah, I mean, that's that's usually a good rule, though. No, it's like my rule of thumb. I'm just like, yeah. if it's not hard after second draft, and I get done like looking over, then it must just be whack, and I need to start over. <laughs> Can you can you go back to that beat then, or is like that beat just done? No, I could go back to the beat. Okay, it's just it's the rhyme. Got to start fresh. Or, yeah. Oh no! Oh shit! Did he? Did he drop? Yeah, he dropped. I wonder if he just click click the button accidentally or something. <laughs> I think so. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Where'd I go? We got you back. We got audio back. I don't have video yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold up. How do I get video? Give you camera. Turn on camera. Boom. There we go. My, oh, y'all. Go. What happened? Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I was saying, like, yeah, as far as draft goes, like, yeah, I do draft. I do two. The second one is hard and cool. We good. So there's my third piece of repetition. And then my final piece of repetition is in the booth. It's like, that's where I make my like final, final cuts. Like if I'm rhyming something, and even if it's in the moment where I'm like, you know, it'd be hard if I said this instead. I'll just make that change like right there in the booth. Yeah. Like, I was like, if it just comes to me, like, I don't, or if something doesn't make sense, or like I just do like a last minute, like, oh, this bar should come before that bar. I do all of that. In there, and then because I have to, because I'm such a like overthinker. That if I don't find a way to like decide when I'm gonna let something go, it'll never get done. Mm-hmm. But usually in the booth is when I decide. <laughs> I'm like, that's it. 
it goes out. Well, that, to I mean, that, and yeah, I mean, that's and that's mm-hmm. always been kind of, um, you know, uh, impressive to me uh, because I mean, man, especially when you know, when you're talking about your, your like the more dense uh, mm-hmm. uh, stuff that you write is is remembering all that, uh, you know, without any sort of uh you know paper or prompts or anything you mm-hmm. know and i mean i know plenty of people that write stuff down mm-hmm. uh which makes sense like yeah that that would help reinforce it but like that you know still it's another thing when you're going and you know you're going to play a show and you know do yeah whatever, eight that's or ten point. tracks it's just like man that's a lot of words <laughs> you gotta fucking yeah. remember <laughs> and you know it's funny man like i think about um my buddies always talk about, like, man, you should do stand-up. And I'm like, well, you know what you forget about stand-up? I mean, stand-up has its own rhythm. Mm-hmm. But, like, it doesn't have, like, an actual beat reinforcing the things you're going to say. Like, in a way that's... You know what I mean? Like, the yeah, way... No, no, I know, I know what you're saying, it, but, but, but there's a, a like, flow to, to There's to a the flow, jokes. but, like... That's yeah. what helps me remember the words is remembering music and the way that the words are being said, you know, okay. yeah. whereas there's there's definitely like with that's just something I, I always just think about, like, or when you like watch like motivational speakers or whatever, like they know what they're going to say when they get out there. I'll be thinking, how do they forget? That's <laughs> that stuff, especially if it's nonsense, you know, <laughs> Like, especially if it's not, but it's definitely like there's a, it's just an internal, but it's also just that repetition. Like, I'm like walking around. I won't even lie to you. Like, even after I get it recorded, I'm listening to it, especially if I I plan to play a show. Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm listening to it all the time. I'm walking around my house, rhyming it, looking like a crazy person, walking around the house, going, walking up and down the street (laughs) on my lunch break. (laughs) I'm sitting in my car. Yeah. I'm just thinking about people that might be like passing by you, like, what is wrong with him? Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely that guy, though. Like, I do it. Guys, that's what I'm doing. You know? And I'm right there with you. I was, I was doing. My video, like a couple weeks ago, walking around my neighborhood with my camera out, doing selfies, singing up and down the street. So my yeah. neighbors definitely think I've lost it. I think <laughs> I was going to ask you about that, man. That looks like exactly what you did. That's exactly like... what I did. I think <laughs> stand-up comedy would be harder than lyrics, though. And I, I mean, I haven't written rap yeah. lyrics, but I've written like song lyrics, yeah. which I think is probably easier than rap because there's less. <laughs> but like. With stand-up comedy, <laughs> yeah, you can't sneak. Let me go the other way. With music, my music specifically, like I can get away with a line that's like not as good as the other lines, right? Because the music will carry it, and like either mm-hmm. either the beat is good or the melody is good, and you have somewhere else to go. With stand-up comedy, like every line has to drive home and you there's no you can't have any fat in your joke it has to be Man. driving toward your thing and that like level of revising and editing and, and getting your stuff to the point where it does the job so hard doing it. yeah it's like you have to keep doing it though like you get the one you like you get your opening off boom all right moving on to this next piece of funny or if it's <laughs> narrative thing there needs to be funny throughout the whole thing till we get to the big joke mm-hmm. at the end you know that get it's like yo there's more to that than you would believe you know oh, yeah i have a i just i just use comedy because i have such a like strong respect for it people kind of casually like you should do that like no i shouldn't do that <laughs> because <laughs> it won't be very good for me to do i like <laughs> I think I think your podcast is like the perfect platform for like that side of you because there yeah. isn't that yeah. pressure. But you you can you can be funny and you can tell stories exactly. and you can yeah. have that 
back and forth. And even that like, is its own. Like, um, I really, I, I owe you, I owe you that. You're the only reason I even pushed a button on it because I was like trying to figure out how I would do one forever. And he was like, "Yeah, man, just do it, man. Low stakes, just go for it." I'm like, you know what, man? Thank you, man. I'm oh like, yeah. <laughs> I haven't done any new episodes or anything, but I'm actually still thinking like I just have this I'm kind of going on a tangent, so please forgive me. But, oh man, this is what this is about. But I just have this thing about like now everyone has a podcast and I'm like, how do you but again, that's like new pressure that I'm putting on myself where I'm just exactly. like, exactly. how do I make it something other people aren't doing and make it kind of cool? Like I don't want to just do the same thing that other people are doing, and I, I can't, I can't, I find myself getting caught in that circle of thought. Like, I don't want to just do something that everyone's already doing, and I don't have a camera, and I don't have a, <laughs> like that. And when I go on TikTok, theirs all look cooler than mine. They have way more expensive microphones and <laughs> women with cleavage, and <laughs> you'll never have that, my friend. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And really stupid subjects that get lots of views. I want views. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know how to get over that hump in my head where I'm just like, all right, here we go. Let's do it. I think, I mean, but as a uh, listener, man, those are all good questions. mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, as a listener, like, I come for you, right? Like, I come Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. unhappy to spend 45 minutes or an hour with you. Yeah. Mm. So, all that you know, the the cleavage and the lights and everything. I mean, that makes a difference to like strangers, and it might get right. somebody to click once. Mm-hmm. But to like have a relationship with a listener who wants to come back and spend that time with you, it all comes down to just personality and just being yourself. And you've got. That's when it's got that. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, the yeah, the personality is 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 what uh, I, you know, I enjoy about it. You know, it's not Mm. I I, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily think, you know, like, well, this is just like, you know, so and so is, I guess, I mean, I'm sure there's people that do that. But um, but yeah, I think there's there's something to be said about just how you are, you know. Uh, your personality and, and 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 the way that you're, you, I guess you you know you explain things and you you talk about things. It's it's something that um, yeah, I, I, I'm not, you know, so, so it's, it's something that I'm not you know it's not yeah it, it, it wouldn't uh, occur to me to compare it to something else. That's that's what that, that helps. Makes yeah. sense. I promise I have like analysis paralysis. Like I was like <laughs> like well I gotta do the. Do, 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 do. So I just wanted to, but I wanted to extend that to y'all that you guys were the the impetus for that. Like you guys were the ones who were like, "Man, just try it. You know, have fun with it." <laughs> you know, and, and I did. So I want to say yeah. thank you for that. But man, yeah, I uh, that 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 I I don't know. That makes me feel feel good. Uh, yeah, we're yeah. happy that you did. And you know, if yeah. you, if you feel like it, I hope you'll you know I hope you'll keep doing it from time to time. And I will say, yeah. you know, I do also come for like the really intense rap nerd like rapper on rapper talking about breath control and shit like i I love that (laughs) i know that's like a narrow slice of the audience yes it (laughs) is a little bit of that sprinkled in no it's definitely like yeah like rap nerd like that was the goal was like i want to nerd out with other rappers who are willing to nerd out about this stuff you know because so so much of the I, I think that's uh, that, that's I think that's also where the value is though because mm-hmm. right yes you know, I'm sure there's there, you know I'm sure there's plenty if you want to go find it there's plenty of, of of um you know places you can find that kind of discussion but um I think that that kind of stuff is what adds value to 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 what you were doing yeah yeah, yeah. That well, thank you, man. I'm, 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 I'm hoping to come back to it in the new year. I am yeah. going to try to uh, invest in some, in some things that will make it a smidge, like let's see, the production value. Yeah, I'm going to add to the production value. 
by like a hundred dollars or so. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, yeah, it's like maybe I won't do it on my phone anymore. Maybe I'll actually like find somewhere to record it. You know, something like that. <laughs> you know, I'll find a room somewhere that's not. You know, I was just kidding. But... <laughs> I just, won't, I just won't be in my car, just you know, freestyle and have conversations. You know, have a green screen with like a green know. screen. <laughs> How much is a green piece of construction paper, man? <laughs> man, I look at the budget. <laughs> you, you would. It, it's almost. It's almost. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't. I don't know much about that stuff, but I mean, I, I think I've looked at green screens. I'm like, really, really that that much. Yeah, man. I do that every time I look at any of that stuff. I'm like, wait. Can't what? you just spray paint a sheet? <laughs> I, Green? I, I put up like, a sheet what? for the for what I just did. I put up a sheet over the garage door with clothespins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. For sure, yeah. That, I mean, yeah. all that production stuff is great. I mean, it does matter. And still, at the end of the day, if it's you in your car, like... I'll tune in for that, you know, and that doesn't yeah. like like what I hope this show, you know, our show is. I think what you're doing. It's, it matters just as much, if not more, two years from now and five years from yeah. now. And mm-hmm. when you talk to somebody about their craft and about their music. That's valuable for as long as anyone listens to them or or just knows them you know their kids their grandkids can get something from that and so there's like this evergreen you can just do it whenever you want you don't have to be on a schedule you don't have to you can dip in and out and what you're creating maintains its value or maybe grows you know mm-hmm. yeah man and see that's the stuff i, I need to hear i just have to have that reinforced. If I get it in my head that I'm, you know, everything is everything in, uh, everything in our society, pretentious, pretentious talk I'm about to have here, but it's it's, it's so much geared towards like, you know, there's a productivity that needs to be happening. Yep. And sometimes it's hard for me to impose that kind of thing on art. And when I can't do it, see, this is you guys are my therapist now, but right. when I can't do it, I really feel bad. I'll be like, man, I need to be making four albums a year and I need to have this many videos prepared. And I need, because that's how you do it. You know what I mean? And when I can't, for one reason or another, it's like very frustrating for me because it's like I'm not, I'm not being productive in a way that you know, will ever be rewarded. But uh, but with this record, though, it was important, too, though, because it was like, it's only five records, but I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of what we were able to do. And it took, I mean, I put out a record at the beginning of the year as well, Heresy, mm-hmm. with uh, August Cannon. Mm-hmm. And... um you know, it did. It did. It did well. Like as far as Bandcamp, we did exclusively on Bandcamp. But I still had this feeling like I have to get another one out before the year is out. Because if I don't, who am I? You know, I got to. I want to be in the co- like all that stuff. Get sometimes can get in the way. I guess I'm saying all that to say, like all of that productivity can get in the way. You actually enjoying. Mm thing you're doing you know and that's something that i'm trying to circle back to hopefully in the next, in the new year you know just like trying to recalibrate and be like all right you need well, to be I, yeah i mean a, a lot of a lot of guests have have, have, have expressed that um exact mm-hmm. feeling and and i mean I, and i i i feel that way too like i um you know i have there's there's a lot of things that i i know i want to do um mm-hmm. and i feel bad if i like sit around you know mm-hmm. one, one or two nights and and don't like do anything i'm like oh man i wasted i wasted you know x amount of hours just just sitting there it's like well man sometimes you just have to sit there man sometimes yeah. 
sometimes you have to go for a walk. Sometimes you have to, you know, you can't, if, 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 if you don't take time for yourself, um, I mean, that's gonna, that's gonna make your art suffer as well. So, yeah, sure. Um, no, that's for sure, though. Right. You know, I mean, pro- productivity is important, but you know, um, you know what you just alluded to, you being proud of of the you know these five five tracks. I think that's more important than if you put out two or three other EPs this year. Like if you yeah. put out put out this, you know, you get two that you're like, you know, stand behind and like and enjoy, then. I mean, that's. I think that's I, that's the goal. I mean, yeah, that's this, exactly. This, 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 despite people saying, "Well, you know, you didn't put out six, so <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I don't know if I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't think we can. I don't think we can have that. You know, but yeah, I, 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 I yeah, that it's. Just, yeah, for sure. I, I hear what you're saying, man. It's, hey, it's, you're in. Uh, how are you telling me you're in? How many bands? Four. <laughs> it, I was. I was guessing. I can't even keep track. <laughs> Like I'm just saying, bro. Like, you deserve a day or two if you were in that many <laughs> bands. When you know, that's by you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it varies, but it, it's just you know, that's man. You only got one one life to live, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's what I was just gonna say so. too. You were in my head, like, hey, man, you doing, you doing the most with what you with your gift, you know? Right. So. I think so this is just my two cents you mm-hmm. know listening to this and as an artist and thing and i it is so hard and i think stick you're right i think it is very healthy for us to get this productivity and this kind of capitalist if you want like mindset i didn't want to go there because i didn't we want go to there. You know. we could go there we could go there I, I think guy. it's it's good for our art. Oh, well, now they're getting political. I don't. Who <laughs> get political? I think it's good for our art to get that out of the process. Yeah. Yes. It, and then that there is the step two to me is like there is an element of discipline, right? So I think it is important to go, whether it's to your microphone, your notepad, your instrument, your guitar, your synthesizer, whatever it is that you want to be creative with. I think it's important to go there on a regular basis. I would suggest probably a daily basis or almost every day. Mm -hmm. And then pay attention. Nate, like you're saying, like, what what do I really need though? Is it time to practice? Is it time to record? Right. Is it time to take a break? It is right. hard to know and to to quiet everything else out. To hear that inner voice to understand what do I need today? And Absolutely. and and the because the answer is different, right? We can't give you. Yeah. I can't tell you which way it's going to fall on on any given day. Only you can go to your spot and know for yourself where your heart is at that day. That's exactly, man, that's exactly it, man. Like, yeah. and being able to listen, listen to, listen to it instead of like, yeah, that's, that's really it. Listen yeah. to that thought in your head that's yeah. telling you one way or the other, like we are inspired, we are prepared, we are ready to pour into this thing today and then also listen when it's saying like nah today's not it today right. is not the day right. some know? days you got to push yourself and some yeah, days some you got to cut yourself some them. slack and and you you don't know which day you're having until you go to the place to find out that's exactly it man i agree with that wholeheartedly yep for sure. solved it <laughs> we solved it for hundreds of years going All forward. Right. Everyone just watch this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're just gonna oh. we're gonna yeah. Th- that's it. I think we're I mean I think we're done here. Yeah. You so. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool.
Thank you.